The Colby's is a spin-off of the popular series Dynasty, which aired from 1985 to 1987. It follows the lives of the Colby family, who are wealthy and powerful, just like the Carringtons from Dynasty. The show is known for its drama, twists, and turns, featuring family feuds, romance, and high-stakes business. It stands out for its glamorous portrayal of wealth and power struggles within a family dynasty. The show has left a lasting mark on the television industry with its memorable characters and dramatic storylines. It's a classic example of a primetime soap opera that has entertained audiences with its mix of suspense, love, and betrayal. The Colbys holds a special place in TV history for its bold storytelling and larger-than-life characters. Now, I'm curious to know about your connection with the Colbys. What is your most memorable moment or personal experience related to the series? Your stories and memories are valuable, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching because we've got many more funny, shocking, and sad facts to share about this unforgettable show. So stay tuned. Frankie. Was willst du denn hier? Ich musste dich the television series The Colbys, which aired in 1985, was a spin-off of the popular show Dynasty. It focused on a wealthy family involved in the oil industry, mirroring the economic trends of the 1980s. The show is remembered for its glamorous portrayal of wealth and power, which continues to fascinate viewers. It also featured a diverse cast and dramatic storylines that addressed various social issues, some of which are still relevant today. The Colbys holds a place in television history for its style and storytelling influencing how later shows depicted rich and influential characters. Despite not being as famous as Dynasty, it has a dedicated fan base that appreciates its unique qualities. The show's relevance today can be seen in modern series that explore similar themes of wealth, family dynamics, and business, showing that the topics the Colbys touched upon are timeless. In the mid-1980s, a television series featured a cast with notable backgrounds and achievements. Barbara Stanwyck, a seasoned actress with a career detailed in a reputable biography, brought depth to the show. Ken Howard, known as the White Shadow from his basketball days, added his athletic spirit to his role. Diane Carroll, an actress with a rich life story as shared in her autobiography, infused her character with real-life experiences. Together, they contributed to a show that became a part of television history. I can't understand. Ich hatte sechs Anwälte am Hals und eine Fusionsvereinbarung auf dem Tisch, als ich mit Sable vor den Trauertat trat. In the early 90s, Stephanie Beecham received recognition for her performance in The Vortex with a Drama Log Award. During the show's run, Charlton Heston and Barbara Stanwyck were among the highest paid actors on television, earning $85,000 and $75,000 per episode, respectively. Ken Howard, known for his role in The White Shadow, continued to engage audiences by appearing in ESPN promotions, often alongside Byron Stewart, bringing a touch of their previous characters to the sports network. Nein, Jeff, nicht. Nicht wir. Lass mich allein. Ich brauche Zeit, um... In the mid-1960s, Stephanie Beecham started her journey in acting with a modest role at the Everman Theatre in Liverpool. It was here she first crossed paths with John McHenry, who would become her spouse years later. Their paths intertwined again professionally and personally when they both performed in Harold Pinter's The Homecoming at the Nottingham Playhouse. Charlton Heston, another prominent actor, faced legal challenges when his neighbors claimed a landslide from his property caused significant damage to theirs, leading to a lawsuit seeking over a million dollars in damages. Additionally, Heston made a notable career decision by declining the lead role in The Omen, which was subsequently offered to Gregory Peck. Barbara Stanwyck, known to her peers as Missy or the Queen, brought a commanding presence to the screen. In another sphere, Charlton Heston, who was once considered for the role of Jim Bowie in the Alamo, decided against it due to the film's political overtones. Heston's legacy also includes being immortalized on a United States postage stamp, part of the Legends of Hollywood series, which debuted on April 11, 2014. This stamp, featuring his image from Ben Hur, was valued at 49 cents at the time of issue. Der einzigen Frau widmen, die ich je geliebt habe. Seit heute Mittag zumindest. Charlton Heston's presence in the entertainment industry extended beyond his physical performances. 
despite his character's death in an earlier film. Heston's likeness as Cardinal Richley was immortalized in a painting for The Return of the Musketeers, a testament to his lasting influence. His decision-making also shaped cinematic history. By choosing to portray Moses over Alexander the Great, he opened the door for Richard Burton to take on the latter role. Meanwhile, June Lockhart's career includes roles in films that received the highest accolades, with appearances in two movies nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, showcasing her ability to select impactful projects. Then, huh? Los, raus hier. Jetzt werde ich dir mal was sagen, Freundchen. Maxwell Caulfield's career includes working alongside notable actors such as Charlie Sheen in The Boys Next Door and Martin Sheen in Gettysburg. Charlton Heston shared the screen with James Coburn in a series of films over three decades. Barbara Stanwyck, known for her strong screen presence, saw her career thrive even as her personal life faced challenges, notably her divorce from Frank Fay, who later found success on Broadway. These actors brought depth to their roles, shaping the dramatic landscape of their time. Heute kann Jason es ihm nicht überschreiten. Andrew Colby hat in seinem Testament festgelegt, dass dieses Haus in the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with roles once portrayed by others. Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, shared this experience with Raymond Massey. Heston stepped into the shoes of Sherlock Holmes, a character Massey had embodied 60 years prior. He also donned the robes of Cardinal Richelieu, another of Massey's former portrayals. Additionally, both actors brought to life the figure of Abraham Lincoln, albeit in different eras and productions. Catherine Ross, celebrated for her role in The Graduate, maintained a lasting friendship with co-star Dustin Hoffman, showcasing the enduring bonds formed through collaborative work in film. Heston's career was marked by choices and sacrifices. He declined a comedic opportunity in the great race due to conflicting schedules with the agony and the ecstasy leading to Tony Curtis filling the role. These decisions are a testament to the ever-shifting nature of an actor's journey through film and television. Passion for a role can lead an actor to accept less than their usual fee, as was the case with Ricardo Montalban. His dedication to the character Khan Noonien Singh saw him return to the role for a modest sum, ensuring his performance was authentic by revisiting the original portrayal. Catherine Ross's career is marked by a series of notable performances, each building on the last, showcasing her talent in a range of memorable films. Similarly, Barbara Stanwyck's collaborations with Robert Young in the mid-1930s highlight the era's collaborative spirit among actors, resulting in multiple successful projects. These instances reflect the commitment and adaptability of actors to their craft and the collaborative nature of filmmaking. In the landscape of television, age differences among actors can be surprising. Catherine Ross, known for her role in The Graduate, was only eight years younger than her on-screen mother, Anne Bancroft, in the film. Meanwhile, Michael Parks demonstrated his range by portraying two distinct characters across the Kill Bill series. He first appeared as the pun-slinging police officer Earl McGraw, and later transformed into Esteban Vigneault, an aged and smooth-talking former mentor to Bill. Parks shares this unique distinction with Chia Huey Liu, who also took on different roles in each of the films. Barbara Stanwyck's talent shown in 1941, starring in three comedies that all received Oscar nominations for Best Story. Despite the recognition, none secured the award. These instances highlight the dynamic nature of acting careers and the diverse roles artists undertake. Dabei habe ich normalerweise ein gutes Auge für Frauen. Ich habe ihr Bild in der Zeitung. Barbara Stanwyck, known for her strong screen presence, left a significant mark on the film industry with her roles in four films recognized by the National Film Registry. Her dissatisfaction with her character's direction in the show led to her departure after the first season, despite an initial agreement to appear in the second season. Charlton Heston, another prominent actor, shared his perspective on film direction in his autobiography, suggesting that his historical epic might have reached greater heights with a director experienced in grand-scale productions. These insights from the actors provide a glimpse into the challenges and decisions behind the scenes of the entertainment industry.
Hello. Ricardo Montalban and Sid Sherry's shared the screen in a series of films spanning three decades, showcasing their enduring collaboration. Their joint filmography includes titles from the golden age of cinema such as Fiesta and The Kissing Bandit to the more contemporary One Ton Ton, The Dog Who Saved Hollywood. Charlton Heston's career had a serendipitous connection with Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments, being born the same year the original was released and later starring in the acclaimed 1956 remake. Heston's filmography is distinguished by his roles in award-winning and nominated films, including The Greatest Show on Earth and Ben-Hur, which earned the highest accolades in cinema. This, this is irgendwie vergangen. This is weg. Charlton Heston, known for his dynamic roles in classic films, shared a close age proximity with his co-stars. Despite portraying the son of Martha Scott in two major films, their real life age difference was a mere 11 years. His pairing with Yvonne DiCarlo as his wife in another significant film saw him as the younger counterpart, with only a year separating them. Heston's career was marked by his willingness to revisit characters across different productions. He reprised the role of Ben-Hur in both a live action and an animated version embodied Andrew Jackson in two separate films and returned to the character of George Taylor in a sequel. His portrayal of Mark Antony was also seen in two distinct movies, showcasing his adaptability and commitment to his craft. So festhalten können. Naja, sie. Sie nehmen mich zwar ziemlich in Beschlag. Before landing the memorable role on Dynasty, Kate O'Mara was considered for a part in another drama series. Across the Atlantic, viewers in the United Kingdom had to wait two weeks between episodes of this show and its counterpart as they were aired on alternate Fridays, extending the duration of the seasons. Barbara Stanwyck, a celebrated actress, linked her early cinematic work with a later television role during her heartfelt speech at the Cecil B. DeMille Award Ceremony, expressing gratitude for the honor and her affectionate connection with her co-star. Stanwyck's career spanning decades saw her move from classic films to television, where she continued to deliver powerful performances. Ich vorstellen, das ist Randall, meine Frau. Mrs. Miles Colby. In the casting process for a significant role, four actresses were in contention Angie Dickinson, Rula Lenska, Kate O'Mara, and Elizabeth Ashley. Meanwhile, Maxwell Caulfield, despite the 18-year age gap with his wife Juliet Mills, faced challenges on set. His disagreement with Stephanie Beecham's casting led to a tense atmosphere during production, highlighting the off-screen dynamics that can influence a show's environment. Kunstausstellungen hierzulande. Ich habe immer gesagt, du kannst ausgeben, was du willst, aber überleg es dir. Das In the world of television drama, casting decisions can lead to a flurry of speculation. Such was the case when Doris Day was rumored to be in consideration for the role of Constance Colby. The show's conclusion in 1987 led to a reshuffling of talent, with John James and Emma Sams transitioning to roles on Dynasty. They were not alone. Stephanie Beecham and Tracy Scoggins joined them in the following season, and Maxwell Caulfield returned for Dynasty The Reunion in 1991. Meanwhile, June Lockhart, known for her maternal roles in the Lassie series, portrayed the grown-up version of Elizabeth Taylor's character from Lassie Come Home and the Son of Lassie, adding to her repertoire of family-centric performances. Ich bin ein Colby Mutter, und wir Colbys müssen beweisen, wie stark wir sind. <laughs> In the mid-1980s, a high-profile drama series caught the public's attention with its casting possibilities. Big names like James Coburn, Gregory Peck, and Elizabeth Taylor were rumored to be in consideration for significant roles. Meanwhile, Barbara Stanwyck, already a respected figure in the industry, was making headlines for her graciousness. In a memorable moment at the Golden Globes, she used her acceptance speech to commend fellow actress Anne Margaret for her work showcasing Stanwyck's characteristic habit of uplifting others even during her own moments of recognition. Charlton Heston, another esteemed actor of the time, was notable for his dedication to the stage. His performances in productions such as Long Day's Journey Into Night, Macbeth, and The Cane Mutiny stood out. Heston's passion for theater culminated in his final stage appearance in Love Letters, performed alongside his wife Lydia Clark in London's Haymarket Theatre, marking a poignant end to his theatrical endeavors in 1999. Gemeint, du würdest dich wehren, aber ich habe das bestritten. Du kennst mich besser. Ja.
In the mid-1980s, a notable interaction occurred when Aaron Spelling approached Barbara Stanwyck for a role opposite Charlton Heston. Her witty response highlighted concerns about age perception in the industry. Heston himself was honored as the inaugural recipient of an award named after him by the American Film Institute in 23, recognizing his contributions to film. Meanwhile, Stanwyck was known for her political stance, being part of a group of actors who actively supported certain ideals during a politically charged period in the 1950s. Irgendwas musste ich Sable ja erzählen. Und was für ein Märchen erzählst du mir? Kein Märchen. Charlton Heston's admiration for Toshiro Mifune began in the 1960s, leading to a lasting friendship marked by annual Christmas card exchanges until Mifune's passing. John Forsyth's early life included a marriage to Parker McCormick, a fellow student at the American Academy Dramatic of Arts, with whom he toured in a children's theater troupe. Stephanie Beecham, known for her role as Jessica Van Helsing, was set to continue her performance in a sequel, but could not due to scheduling conflicts. In her final acting role, Barbara Stanwyck brought her extensive experience to the screen one last time. Kevin McCarthy, known for his frequent collaborations with director Joe Dante, added another notable performance to his filmography. Meanwhile, John Forsyth's long-standing friendship with Linda Evans, which began when she was a teenager, was evident in their on-screen chemistry, having worked together before their later fame. These connections and milestones mark the end of an era and the continuation of relationships that began long before their most famous roles. Yeah, it's good. Stand Sie durch. Mr. Cool. In the casting process for a notable family drama, Sue Lloyd, recognized from her work on Crossroads, was in the running to portray Sable Colby. The show's connection to Hollywood's golden era was underscored by David Hedison, who passed away on July 18, 2019. Hedison was celebrated for his roles in The Enemy Below and The Fly, as well as his part in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, making him the last of the actors from these works to pass away. The roles of Jason and Constance Colby were almost filled by Burt Lancaster and Katherine Hepburn, two distinguished figures of classic cinema, which would have added a different dimension to the series. In the late 1950s, Charlton Heston's career took a significant turn. Despite initial reluctance, he accepted a role alongside Gregory Peck in The Big Country, which paved the way for his casting as the lead in Ben-Hur. His performance earned him an Academy Award. Around the same time, Catherine Ross was beginning her journey in acting, meeting her future husband at college and marrying him shortly after. Meanwhile, Ricardo Montalban was making a name for himself, notably reprising his role as Khan Noonien Singh in the Star Trek franchise, a rare feat for actors of that era. These events marked pivotal moments in their careers, setting the stage for their future successes. Charlton Heston and Oliver Reed shared the screen in a series of films showcasing their dynamic as actors. Their collaborations include swashbuckling adventures and a classic tale of pirates and treasure. In a different kind of role, Ricardo Montalban portrayed a Japanese gangster, a performance noted for the lack of blinking due to restrictive makeup, which gave his character an unusual intensity on screen. Heston's personal life was as storied as his film career, with a home that stands as a testament to his achievements. The house, a fixture in the Hollywood landscape for over four decades, houses a collection of items from his iconic roles, offering a glimpse into the history he shaped both on and off the screen. Each artifact, from the Roman figure in the backyard to the paintings lining the hallway, tells a story of a film legacy crafted over years of dedication to the art of cinema. Catherine Ross, known for her roles in significant films, tied the knot with Conrad L. Hall during a notable year when two of her major movies were released. Both films showcased her acting skills and Hall's cinematography. Later, her life intersected with Sam Elliott, who debuted in one of those films, leading to their marriage. Meanwhile, Barbara Stanwyck, a celebrated actress, had a profound influence on Peter Breck, Lee Majors, and Linda Evans. Their admiration for her work as children turned into a professional relationship when they all starred alongside her in a popular Western series. This connection highlights the lasting impact of film and television on both audiences and actors alike.
Mit Daddy in Kalifornien. Und ich war bei Mama in London. In the early 1980s, a romance blossomed on stage between Maxwell Caulfield and Juliet Mills while performing in The Elephant Man. Their relationship led to marriage shortly after Mills finalized her divorce. Meanwhile, Barbara Stanwyck, a seasoned actress, once expressed her fondness for Robert Taylor, not just as her favorite co-star, but also as her partner in life, with whom she shared the screen in several films. Adding to her family's cinematic ties, Stanwyck's brother, Malcolm Byron Stevens, appeared in a supporting role in the file on Thelma Jordan, showcasing the family's connection to the film industry. Before their rise to fame on screen, some actors found unique paths in their early careers. Charlton Heston, for instance, supported himself by modeling for art students in New York, a job that ceased once he signed a Hollywood contract. Michael Parks, known for his role in Then Came Bronson, often took the initiative to rewrite lines he felt didn't suit his character, famously changing his opening line to Hang In There. June Lockhart, recognized for her work in science fiction and horror, shared insights into her roles in these genres during an interview for Tom Weaver's book on classic creature features. These experiences highlight the diverse backgrounds and contributions of actors in the industry. Jetzt zieh schon endlich deine verrückte Klage gegen Tante Conny zurück. Du verlierst Dad, wenn du es nicht tust. Catherine Ross, known for her acting prowess, was once set to appear in the public eye, a project from the early 1970s. In a different artistic vein, Joseph Campanella, another actor from the same era, saw his lineage continue in the music industry with his sons Dominic and Rob Campanella becoming members of the quarter after a Los Angeles-based psychedelic rock band. Meanwhile, Charlton Heston, an actor with a commanding presence, was approached by the FBI during a critical standoff in Waco, Texas in 1993. He was asked to lend his voice as God in negotiations with David Korsh, although this strategy was ultimately not implemented. In the world of television drama, actors often draw inspiration from their predecessors. Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, looked up to Gary Cooper, an actor celebrated for his naturalistic performances. Their collaboration in The Wreck of the Mary Deer showcased Heston's respect for Cooper's dedication to his craft, particularly his ability to perform challenging stunts despite health setbacks. Meanwhile, Diane Carroll, who broke new ground with her role in Julia, experienced a different off-screen dynamic. Her co-star Mark Coppage sought a familial connection with Carol's daughter, mirroring their on-screen relationship, yet the sentiment was not reciprocated. Heston's admiration wasn't limited to Cooper. He also held high regard for actors like Henry Fonda, Clark Gable, Cary Grant, and James Stewart, all of whom left a significant mark on the film industry with their distinctive styles and memorable performances. These relationships and admirations behind the scenes contributed to the depth and authenticity viewers witnessed on screen. Aber die Aktion saubere Erde wird über den herfallen, der für die Verschmutzung verantwortlich ist. Und das ist in the late 1970s, Kevin McCarthy shared his expertise in theater as an artist in residence at Kent State University, where he also showcased his one-man show. Ricardo Montalban, known for his diverse roles, held his portrayal of Khan Noonien singing in the Star Trek sequel close to his heart, a sentiment echoed by critics who praised his commanding presence. Meanwhile, Joan Collins, despite her fame from Dynasty, chose not to participate in the show's extension, setting her apart from her co-stars who made the crossover. Charlton Heston's commitment to his craft was evident when he offered to return his paycheck for the opportunity to complete crucial scenes in Major Dundee, a decision that highlighted differing visions for the film among the cast and crew. His dedication to authenticity extended to his portrayal in Ben-Hur, where he navigated complex character dynamics shaped by unspoken histories. Despite the cancellation of his later show, Heston stood firm on his value as an actor, choosing to depart when contractual terms did not align with his expectations, unlike his colleagues who transitioned back to Dynasty. This steadfast approach to his roles and career choices underscores the actor's principled stance in the industry. Es geht nicht. Egal, woran ich auch denke, sie ist immer in the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with diverse roles before finding the one that fits. 
Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, was once in the running to portray Pike Bishop and the Wild Bunch, a role that ultimately went to William Holden. Meanwhile, John Forsyth didn't hesitate to accept the role of William Powers and the powers that be, a part that Norman Lear had him in mind for from the start. On another front, Emma Sams, beyond her on-screen endeavors, dedicated herself to philanthropy by co-founding the Starlight Foundation in 1982, an organization aimed at supporting seriously ill children and their families. Ich bin gekommen, um dir zu Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, shared a unique connection with Gregory Peck through their portrayals of Dr. Joseph Mengel, albeit in different films and years apart. Heston's portrayal came in the film My Father in 23, while Peck took on the role in 1978's The Boys from Brazil. In another instance, Heston's dedication to historical accuracy led him to deny the use of scenes from the agony and the ecstasy in the documentary The Celluloid Closet, based on his extensive research into Michelangelo's life. Meanwhile, Michael Parks received high praise from Quentin Tarantino, who regards him as one of the finest actors, a sentiment echoed on the official websites for Kill Bill. Ah, ja, als ich gegen die Stadt geklagt habe wegen der Bohrrechte vor der Küste. Hm, du hast gewonnen und verloren. In the landscape of television, casting decisions and production costs play pivotal roles in the success and longevity of a series. Michael Parks, known for his discerning choice of roles, initially declined the lead and then came Bronson due to script concerns, prompting a rewrite to meet his standards. Barbara Stanwyck, a seasoned actress by the time she starred in Union Pacific, was not the first choice for the role of Molly Monaghan. The part was previously offered to Claudette Colbert and Vivian Lee, both of whom had reasons to pass, leading to Stanwyck's acclaimed performance that earned her the favor of director Cecil B. DeMille. The financial aspect of television production is equally crucial as evidenced by the show in question, where each episode's million dollar budget contributed to its eventual cancellation, highlighting the delicate balance between artistic vision and fiscal practicality in the entertainment industry. In the world of television and film, personal connections often lead to lasting collaborations. Such was the case with John Forsyth, who, after auditioning for voiceover work on Charlie's Angels, formed a three-decade-long friendship with producer Aaron Spelling. This bond endured until Spelling's passing in 2006. Meanwhile, Ricardo Montalban, known for his roles in both television and the Star Trek franchise, maintained a rigorous diet and exercise routine that contributed to his impressive physical appearance. This dedication to fitness dispelled any speculation about artificial enhancement for his role in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Additionally, Forsyth's personal life intersected with popular culture, as his daughters were avid fans of influential music groups like The Beatles and Blood, Sweat and Tears, showcasing the interplay between personal interests and professional endeavors in the entertainment industry. Dein Großvater. Oh. In the early 1940s, John Forsyth crossed paths with Julie Warren, a fellow actor and theater companion. Their partnership in life began shortly after, culminating in a marriage that spanned nearly five decades until Warren's passing in 1994. Barbara Stanwyck, another prominent figure in television, shared the screen with Linda Evans in two notable series, showcasing her range and adaptability as an actor. Stanwyck's legacy extended beyond the screen, as her likeness graced the cover of a music collection, the Electro Swing Revolution Vol. 4, released in 2013, reflecting her lasting influence in popular culture. In the landscape of television, the presence of celebrated actors often elevates a show's status. Such was the case with a series that featured Charlton Heston, who was recognized among the top movie stars of all time. His stature added gravitas to the show's ensemble. Meanwhile, Diane Carroll broke new ground in television casting, addressing a significant lack of diversity in a popular 1980s series before joining the cast of its spin-off. Her role as Dominique Devereaux became a significant part of the show's narrative over two seasons. Additionally, Barbara Stanwyck, a veteran actress with a career spanning several decades, lent her classic Hollywood prestige to the series, connecting past cinematic glory to modern television storytelling. It 
doch nichts vor, Sable. Wir beide sind füreinander bestimmt, und das weißt du. Transitioning from cinema to television, John Forsyth faced challenges securing lead roles in major films after his 1955 performance, leading to his shift to the small screen. Charlton Heston, despite battling the flu and the physical demands of his role in the 1968 film, delivered a performance that was enhanced by his condition, adding depth to his character. Ken Howard, standing tall at six feet six inches, carried the unique distinction from his high school days, marked by nicknames that highlighted his height. Das mache ich nur, solange es geht. Wenn Daddy erfährt, dass wir In the landscape of television, actors often play a pivotal role in each other's careers. Barbara Stanwyck, a force in the industry, stood behind William Holden at the start of his career during the filming of Golden Boy. Her support was not forgotten. Decades later, Holden acknowledged her impact on his success at the Academy Awards, leading to an emotional moment between the two. Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, shared roles with Brian Blessed, both portraying King Henry Romanate and the iconic pirate Long John Silver in different productions. Meanwhile, Michael Parks made a personal choice to turn down the opportunity to perform Mr. Tambourine Man for a television series, showcasing the individual decisions actors make in shaping their careers. These moments and decisions are threads in the fabric of television history, reflecting the interconnectedness and personal nature of the industry. Nicht mein Blut, aber du. Ja, aber ich versuche es zu unterdrücken. Und darum möchte ich so weit wie möglich von dir. In the heart of Los Angeles, two towering structures stood as symbols of corporate rivalry, mirroring the intense competition between their fictional counterparts on television. The first interstate tower, representing Colby Enterprises and the Bank of America building, standing in for Zach Powers headquarters, were more than just backdrops. They were visual representations of the power struggle depicted in the show. Maxwell Caulfield, known for his diverse roles, shared the screen with David Carradine, a martial arts legend, not once but three times. Their collaboration spanned genres and years, showcasing their dynamic on-screen chemistry. The age disparity among the Colby siblings added another layer to the family dynamics, with Barbara Stanwyck, Charlton Heston, and Michael Parks portraying characters with a significant range in years, reflecting the complexities of a family not defined by age, but by their shared history and ambitions. In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with various projects that showcase their range. Emma Sams lent her voice to the audiobook The Heiress Bride by Catherine Coulter, bringing the written work to life. Meanwhile, Barbara Stanwyck's talent earned her a spot as number 11 on the American Film Institute's list celebrating the greatest screen legends. Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, stepped into roles initially passed over by Burt Lancaster. Heston's portrayal of iconic historical figures, from the artist Michelangelo to General Gordon, demonstrated his ability to capture complex characters, despite differing views on their personal lives and the moral implications of their stories. These transitions between roles highlight the fluid nature of acting careers and the diverse opportunities that the industry presents. Oder Mr. Powers. Es war seine Schusswaffe. <laughs> John Forsyth, known for his television success, also worked with acclaimed directors in the film industry. He starred in Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry and Topaz, as well as Richard Brooks in Cold Blood and The Happy Ending. Charlton Heston shared the screen with Sir Christopher Lee and Julius Caesar, The Three Musketeers, The Four Musketeers, Milady's Revenge, and Treasure Island. Interestingly, Forsyth portrayed Cloris Leachman's son in The Powers That Be, despite being her senior by eight years. These actors brought depth to their roles, showcasing their range beyond the small screen. Gib wohl niemals auf, oder? Als nächstes setzt sie uns auf die Straße. Hmm, sie hat die Kinder. Barbara Stanwyck, despite her exceptional acting skills, never received an Oscar. Charlton Heston, known for his commanding presence, missed the opportunity to play Colonel Benjamin Vandervoort in the longest day due to timing. His stance on gun control saw a dramatic shift over the years. Initially advocating for it after the tragic loss of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, he later became a leading figure opposing gun control as president of the National Rifle Association. These shifts and missed chances are part of the rich history behind the actors associated with the show. In the world of television drama, 
Actors often become closely associated with their characters. John Forsyth was affectionately known as Link by his on-screen family, a nickname that carried over into his personal life, evident in the way he signed off his letters and cards to friends. Meanwhile, Charlton Heston, a familiar face in the industry, once had the opportunity to lead in the film Jaws as Police Chief Martin Brody, a role he declined, leading to Roy Scheider's casting. Heston's passion for the character Sir Thomas More was well known, and although he missed out on the 1966 film A Man for All Seasons, he fulfilled his ambition by directing and starring in the 1988 version of the story. These instances reflect the dynamic nature of casting in Hollywood and the personal connections actors have with their roles. Darf ich um diesen Tanz bitten? Selbstverständlich. Entschuldigen Sie mich bitte. Natürlich. In the midst of personal and professional turmoil, John Forsyth's first marriage crumbled despite the birth of his son, leading to a divorce. His subsequent marriage to Julie Warren proved to be more stable. Ricardo Montalban's career included notable appearances alongside Esther Williams and Yvonne DiCarlo in a series of films throughout the 1940s and 1970s. Despite its ambitions, the series faced harsh criticism from both the press and its own cast members, with Barbara Stanwyck and Stephanie Beecham expressing their disapproval in no uncertain terms. Und dir auch nicht, Sammy. In the landscape of television, actors with a rich history in performing arts often bring depth to their roles. John Forsyth, a founding member of the actor studio, honed his craft on stage, notably in Arthur Miller's All My Sons, and the original Broadway hit the tea house of the August Moon. Charlton Heston, recognized for his commanding screen presence, was nominated for his performances in The Ten Commandments, and Ben-Hur, among others, and received accolades including the Henrietta Award and the prestigious Sassel B. DeMille Award. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity earned her a spot on the American Film Institute's list of greatest screen characters, highlighting her ability to captivate audiences with her performances. These actors' previous achievements contributed to their later work, offering viewers performances enriched by their diverse experiences in the world of acting. Ich werde es nie vergessen. Ich auch nicht.